I wanted to talk about Quibi. Quibi launched this week. One of the things about how Quibi was launched, and I, and I really do mean this, uh, to uh, get reviews of it, they sent screeners. And not like his phone, not as a Quibi, basically, how you'd watch it on the platform. And that kind of put puts the app at a disadvantage because you're not really experiencing what the app is like because they're just sending it to you in these weird formats, apparently, and you're not getting things that I actually quite like about it. So a lot of the reviews and things that are written about Quibi, I will say don't actually really capture what Quibi is actually like from what I have seen from like even reputable things. I do think there's things about uh, Quibi that actually work. I think a lot of it uh, sort of doesn't. But um, I guess I'll talk about what I think doesn't work. And that is they really, you know, these are eight minute, they really don't like to get to 10 minute kind of videos. And so oftentimes because of the format and because no one's really, there's not a universal language on how to make a quibby as they're calling them. Uh, they're often cut very quickly, like too quickly. And you, the first time I watched one, I felt like I was like going to have a, a panic attack or something. I was like, oh my God, like slow the fuck down. It was just very intense. Um, but then you sort of get used to it. But the ones that are best sort of either ignore that or use it to their advantage. The ones that are super insecure in their editing and are trying to sort of like make up and fit into a Quibi just feel like this like uberly intense like hitting you too fast that you barely know what happened to you kind of experience that doesn't work. But some sort of get it and actually get it to work. Now, um, I, I did watch a couple shows. I watched Singled Out because I watched Singled Out in the 90s and I saw Kiki Palmer. I don't really know what she's from other than the movie Hustlers. She was good in that movie. Um, she's fine and singled out. The interesting thing about singled out, the one episode I saw the woman was, I'm not sure her, uh, I'm assuming she was bi or non-binary. I'm not exactly sure. I forget because it went by really fast. Um, but she had both, uh, women and men, uh, competing to like be her date or whatever. That was interesting because I remember the singled out, the original was very binary. It had Chris Hardwick and Jenny McCarthy. So it was uber problematic to the nth degree. That was interesting because it was more like woke and obviously because it's a young people show. Because uh, Quibi, that's the one thing with Quibi, is Quibi is very much hitting Generation Z and nothing else. So as much as Disney Plus at least attempted to be all audience, um, it's maybe definitely more skewed towards children um, and families. Mandalorian broke that open a little. Or Netflix or Amazon Prime certainly have arenas in certain different demographics and maybe they're better in some than others but quibi is definitely on generation z which was odd for a streaming service to do i understand phones that means younger but i feel like it could have appealed to more people because there's no kid shows there are four animated shows i looked this up there are four animated shows one by justin roiland none of them were at launch i don't know when they're premiering exactly i i did look i looked for animation or cartoon and i couldn't find any of that um, and the thing with Quibi, and I'll sort of show you, is you can switch. The turnstile thing is weird, because when you're watching it, um, and I'll probably keep my phone down, I wanted to see, uh, you know, how the, 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 the stuff works. So I'm going to play one of the things. When you do it, you can switch back and forth. And some shows are really good at doing, like, you're going to go, you go here, and you go here, and then when you switch, it flips. See? And some shows are really good at doing that. And others aren't because you'll have a shot of like me right here and then it'll transition to here. And some know how to do that and get the art of it and some don't. And some really shouldn't. I wish they wouldn't give you the option for some shows. Now the other shows I watched that are narrative shows was where the streetlights go on, which actually I think was my favorite show, has the most interesting arc I've ever seen for any property because it started, it was developed as a movie. Then it became a TV pilot that's played at Sundance. And a lot of people said it was the best thing they saw at Sundance that year. It never got picked up. And then it became a Quibi, which I think is like a D evolution, I think. Um, but um, it's sort of like a, sort of a Stranger Things, but with the 90s and with a murder mystery. And I will say, I think a lot of what it was doing with the 90s was fucking cringy as all hell. Like they had a part where like there's this teacher who's really cool and he's dating a student. And there's a part where like he was so cool when Kurt Cobain died. He didn't talk. He just put the boombox on his desk and listened to Nevermind all day. And part of me was like, that's embarrassing. And what horrible school lets you do that? And second was like, who plays Nevermind when In Utero is way better? But that's a whole other thing. 
because that was the take, right? But um, they sometimes go over 90s, but it's written by a kid in the 90s, so part of me is like, when I was like 12, I would think that's cool, so I sort of get it. Um, but I was really compelled by that show. I think there's certain points where I'm like rolling my eyes at the narrative decisions they made. I was surprised I was just sitting on my bed watching it, and I was just like struck by the whole thing, and I watched the entire eight minute quibby really quickly so if there's any show i would say and i held it like this it's not that show isn't good at doing the turnstile thing sophie's my background that's that thing's not good at doing the turnstile thing at all um because you really want it uh i guess horizontal not verti vertical basically the street lights go on is the show i've got the most into the other one is about um i think it's called run this city that was really good and i give props to that one because a lot of these shows aren't good at figuring out how to switch the the phone thing how to go back and forth and run this city i noticed when i was watching it vertically i could still follow it and it actually did a really good job of translating that to the different turnstile effect which i think a lot of these things don't do they have an awkward vertical video and a great horizontal video and that was able to do both and understand where the camera needs to be at a certain time so I actually and run the city was actually good for the one episode i saw i was actually i might watch all of those they have series and then they have what they call quibby movies i think um I, i'm not sure if when the street lights go whatever it was sorry unplugged is great too if um that is a movie or a show um i think it was a movie because it was originally was but that's sort of odd like you do a whole thing i might review one of these when i get to the full end of them especially if there's animation on this i plan to at some point it's sort of an interesting odd concept uh the whole idea of a quibby and i sort of want to you know have a review of one just to experience like a whole narrative arc with the thing but here's what quibby's best at and i really do mean this is news it is very good at news because the news in terms of like when you get to broadcast kind of shows they basically only have six or seven good minutes in them anyway. So if you just condense that without all the bullshit and the human interest crap, you actually get a pretty good condensed thing. I was making pancakes and I got to go through each. If you follow, I follow the NBC one. It'll just play from where you left off. So you can just catch up with the news actually. And, it, and it, you know, it went by really quickly. I actually really liked it. The news is really great on there. And I also like, so I'm following two things. The weekly nightly report with... Uh, NBC and I really do like it because they're really good at doing the the flip screen thing and I'll show you real quick because they're oh, th see they do have no it's just like it goes I need to have my sorry my monitor up so you go like this and it's really good at switching between them they're much better at it than others are this doesn't look great right now um, but especially one that's really good at it is the entertainment show they have from Rotten Tomatoes called Fresh Daily by Rotten Tomatoes I know it's produced by Simon Thompson, who um, I like his... Oh, it's not on anymore, but uh, it's on a hiatus, Meet the Movie Press. And he's he's uh, a nice guy to me, and I like Simon Thompson in general. Um, but it has Tim uh, as Andre Meadows. And as you can see, when you're watching it, it's really good at doing the split-screen thing and keeping it like that. And if you see, see, he's right there, and they're very good at understanding how to do this, this thing with it. The thing with the new shows, and this lady I don't... Or, you know the white lady right there um it's the thing with the news shows is obviously they couldn't send out a screener because they're news shows and they're all talking from their living rooms but that show's really good at understanding having the two cameras of the two hosts and flipping them and it works quite naturally and it works within the thing and they actually do recommendations that aren't just the big mainstream movies they're kind of more foreign films that are being promoted by those streaming services but most of those ple uh, places don't normally do like entertainment tonight's not going like hey Les Mis Rob is on Amazon Prime Access Hollywood's not doing that but the Fresh Daily actually is or they did a whole thing of uh, recommending South Korean films because of Parasite now that's not like the most like it's you know movies not gonna like go crazy because they're film recommendations but they're better than most mainstream things are and for a six minute entertainment show they do a damn good job I think the bigger thing with this is I don't think they should have invested this much money. And I think if it was just a news app, because BBC also has a news show as well, if it was just a news app, I think this would be a great app and I would keep it. I don't know if I would pay for it. And I think it's stupid that this isn't just an app supported version because I'd actually keep it just to watch the news and the fresh daily thing. I actually like the news on here. I wish they had invested so much money in all these things. Now, I would still like to watch those two shows I recommended and talked about, I was, but I feel like they would be much better, much more successful on other streaming services. I didn't watch most dangerous game or the Sophie Turner one but where the streetlights go on I think to be honest would actually do quite 
well on Netflix. I wish it had gotten there. I don't know, understand why it didn't get on a better streaming service, particularly because it had great reviews, but we are where we are. Um, but I wish, and same with uh, Run This City as well. But as a news app, if they had just put not $5 billion, but a billion dollars in it, or less than that, and this was just a news site, it would have actually worked well. Um, it sort of is basically like you know YouTube, but the thing with YouTube is people like short videos or they like really long videos and I saw someone tweet this, it's like Quibi's whole idea and their whole idea of like these eight minute things aren't really working for how we consume media at this time. So I, I, I think basically if I was running Quibi, I would have been like, why don't we just make an MCN, a multi-channel network, much like what Frederator is for me and everybody you watch in the cartoon community. Um, but instead of, you know, they're just managers and stuff. Uh, in, in this case, they would just fund all these major big projects and have them be on YouTube would probably have been a lot more of an effective way than launching a whole new streaming service. This is basically like corporate YouTube. And to be honest, I don't really need to that. The thing that really works for it is having like YouTube doesn't have a thing necessarily like it has. It'll just play things, but it won't play things that you picked as well as Quibi does. And with Quibi's follow feature, I actually think that works really well because they don't have a lot of shows. And I can just see, you know, they'll just auto play the news and the fresh daily thing and I think that's great so I would say if you're going for a news so source I actually think it's you just want to get hit with like the big headliney things and so forth it's good for it's actually very good for that but in terms of narrative I, I like those shows on it um, I think the the documentary run this town to run this I keep messing things up I'm sorry I think is probably the best thing they have going and understands the platform the best um, and uh, where the street lights go on I think is the best show um, because it captivates me I mean it captivates me like that movie the Joker did it captivated me while I was watching it but afterwards I was like I don't know about this but not as much that was that was unfair to um, to that show it's not as bad as Joker I think ultimately Quibi is an interesting experiment, but I don't understand its use for it. Ultimately, they should have just made, you know, a, a company that made a lot of corporate YouTube channels and it would probably already be profitable and more people would have watched it. But launching a streaming service like this is kind of a joke. I think it is unfair for them to measure them against Disney Plus because they couldn't promote as well. And also, this is a weird time to launch anything. So I don't think like the numbers were going to be in your favor anyway. And everyone's stuck at home and binging. They're not going to watch eight minute things. It's kind of a, 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 a huge problem to launch right now i'm surprised it didn't delay maybe they'll get people in because people are bored and looking for something i recommend it for the news and i'll probably keep it around and keep watching it for a little bit um i would maybe i might do a segment as a review of where the street lights go on or uh run this town or run whatever sorry uh, i might do that but that's probably as far as I, I can't really take it much more seriously than that and the fact that it has no kid shows uh no animation it doesn't necessarily i think appeal to too many people I, I do think if they made a, a simpler, just ad-supported news app, they honestly really have something. Um, and that you could catch up with the news that way, that sounds actually very appealing to me. But everything else, honestly, should just go on YouTube and it would do a lot better. Because the fact of the matter is, like, that show Hot Ones with the, eat the you know, the wings and the hot sauce, that gets, like, 13 million views and so forth. And you're not really getting that with your 300,000, which by the way, isn't the amount of who are watching. That's the amount who have downloaded. And I've heard a lot of people who downloaded it who haven't watched it. And it actually took me like almost all night to fully download it. And then it like wouldn't, when I deleted it from my iPad, because it went to my iPad too for some reason, it, uh, it, it's like Ghost was still there for a while, so I had to restart the app. So it's like, there are too many issues with it. It's too much of a problem. Um, but I do think there's interesting things about it, and I would recommend those two shows. But it also, there should be a desktop version. There should be a Roku app version. The fact that it's only on a phone, I don't know. I am always fascinated by new ways to discover content and to tell stories and everything like that. So part of me was just very curious. I know we've all joked about Quibi, and how it was going to be the next big thing. It's not, but um, I, I do find it interesting interesting that the thing that I fi find I like most about it is not the thing they're advertising because they couldn't because it just started but I like those things and I like the news and I like the fresh daily thing and I think those are fine for what they are and they're actually probably better than the half hour versions because it just gives you what you want and none of the bullshit and I think that works really well should those be brought back on YouTube when this totally fails absolutely but in terms of catching up with those shows I think they have a really great model uh, right now for that so I hope they just kind of realize what this service is actually good at which is actually watching like quick kind of 
nice, fast, kind of like news things and just sort of getting out and then, you know, going on YouTube and everything like that. Also, you can download each Quibi, which work for Disney Plus. So if you don't have service somewhere, you can watch it later, download it before you go into a subway or something like that. I think that could work out for them. But ultimately, I don't see why most people would get it unless you are into hearing the news really quickly quickly while you're making your family pancakes or something like that. I don't necessarily think it appeals to Generation Z, Z or anything. I think um, ultimately it's kind of a, 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 bat, a botched experiment that they put way too much money in. I would, I think maybe they could just say these. this is presented by Quibi on YouTube would be the best way to save it. But in terms of if you should download it or anything like that, if you're interested in catching up on news or watching that Andre Meadows show, which I actually think is pretty good, then I would check it out. But otherwise, I think... Uh, Maybe forget about Quibi for now.